What up, beautiful people? To God be the glory. I'm Apollo Soul. Blessed to be back here to continue my story. Okay, so guys, today I want to talk about a subject matter that's probably going to be a little sensitive, or probably a lot of sensitive. So I want to talk about the subject matter of not committing to sin. Not committing sin, not committing to sin. So for those that don't really know, the definition for sin is to miss the mark or to wander out of the path of righteousness and honor or just generally to do wrong. So you have to understand that um, sin is the thing that separates us from God because God is a holy God. He's a set apart God. He is a righteous God. So therefore, he's not going to have anything to do with what is wrong if he is a righteous God. So I want to talk about the subject of not committing to sin, not going into agreement with sin, not making a partnership with sin, because yes, he who says he is without sin, he is definitely a liar. However, you have to realize that Jesus, he lived the perfect life. He lived a sinless life. So therefore, if we call ourselves followers of Christ, we are supposed to be following Christ. We are supposed to be obeying his commandments. We are supposed to be pushing towards the mark of being like Christ. So therefore, you cannot push towards the mark and miss the mark. You, you, did you hear what I just said? You cannot push towards the mark but and then be out there missing the mark. Because remember, sin means to miss the mark. So therefore, yes... People, yeah, I have a lot of people who, um, I was in a conversation with somebody the other day. They were like, well, it's impossible for us not to sin. First of all, God is not looking for us to be perfect. Jesus, he died on the cross for our sins. And therefore, he took the punishment. He took the stripes that we were supposed to get. He got the con he got condemned for our sin because remember, the wages of sin is death. And Jesus, when he was on the cross, he nailed every single sinful thing that we've done in our lives for past, present, and future. He nailed those things to the cross. And then when he died, therefore, that, pr that price was paid because remember, the wages for sin is death. When you sin, it calls for death. And the old testament they had that's why they sacrificed animals because when when sin was committed blood had to be shed but thank god for a man named jesus because jesus came and he died for our sins so he paid the price but then not only did he pay the price he rose again from the dead so therefore he was glorified but that's a whole nother video for a whole nother conversation. So therefore yes Jesus did live a perfect life. He he lived he lived the life uh he lived the perfect life so therefore when God sees us he doesn't for the ones that believe in Christ for the ones that um um that that for the ones that declare that Christ is their lord and savior and for the ones that are pressing towards the mark in 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 following his 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 steps and being like him cuz Jesus said if you love me you will keep my commandment and guard my word meaning you cannot just believe in Jesus. You just cannot honor him with your lips. You have to actually, you have to, it has to be something in here that changes. It has to be something in here that is trying to, you know, envelop and, and, and emulate the very character of Christ. You can't be out here saying that, oh yes, I believe in Jesus, my Lord and Savior, but you out here um, getting drunk every night of the week. You out here smoking weed. You out, now I'm told you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step on some toes today, so you better get, I hope you got your steel toes on. You can't be out here smoking weed. You can't be out here, um, and I'm not condemning nobody. This, I'm just telling you, that this is the stuff. These are some of the examples of the things that really, that 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 is, is deemed sinful. Fornication. You, you out here having sex before marriage. Knowing you ain't married to nobody, but you out here has got a, a whole you got plenty of bodies up under your belt it's, it's, it's a whole multitude of other sins but this is what i'm saying you can't commit to that sin you can't when i say commit to it you cannot come into agreement with it you cannot practice mm, my goodness you cannot practice it because that's why in the bible it, it always says thou shalt not commit thou shalt not commit commit means to to make partnership with to be dedicated to it to to to, to go into league with it so therefore when you commit to sin, am I shit in a row shot? When you commit to sin, therefore you are you have become in partnership with it. You are in agreement with it, and when you are in agreement with sin, and you are no longer convicted, you are just you 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 are um um, um practicing the sin as if nothing is wrong with it. See, it, then that will come to a point 
Yeah, I'm gonna step on some toes, have your steel toes ready. That will come up to a point when you practice sin so much, you commit to it so much, and you walk in it so much, and it becomes something so familiar to you. It no longer becomes sin in your eyes. It becomes a lifestyle. That's why you have people in a certain lifestyle. Thank God for deliverance. That's why you have people in a certain lifestyle that 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 have no longer look at it as a sin, but they now take it on and call it a lifestyle. So that's what you have gone into part partnership with it. The sin has become a part of you. And therefore now you are mistaking yourself for the sin, but the sin is the action or, 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 or my shit, or oh shit. You have to understand that you have to come up out of it. You got to, in order for the sin to come up out of you, my shit, or oh shit. Oh my God, I feel the power of God. If, if you want the sin to come up out of you, you got to first come out the sin. Oh my God. If, if you want the sin to come up out of you, you got to first come up out the sin. You got to realize Jesus said to the Roshenda, you got to, oh my God, I feel the power of God. Help me, Holy Spirit, calm down. Help me calm down. If you really want, if you really want to be delivered from something, I don't care if it's, it's a lifestyle, if it's drugs, if it's alcoholism. If you want to be, um, if you want to be delivered from something, delivered from a sin that you have committed to so much that now you just can't shake it. You can't. You feel like you are bound. It's a stronghold in your life. You feel like you feel like you just can't. It's not as easy for you to just get up out of it. You have to come up out of the sin in order for the sin to come up out of you. I'm going to tell you a story about Jesus in the book of John. Yes, in the Gospel of John, there are two instances. It was two instances that Jesus told two people. He said, now go and sin no more. It was a woman. It was an adulterous woman that, that a group of people had brought to Jesus, thinking that Jesus was going to um, was gonna render judgment to the woman. But, the, but Jesus said, he that is without sin cast the first stone. And then the people walked away. And Jesus said, he said, neither am I going to judge you either. He said, but, but go and sin no more. And then it was a it was a another man. It was the man who was sitting there, a crippled man who couldn't walk. He was sitting by this pool. He'd been sitting by the pool for some odd years. He, he, and because it, it was some saying that um, when, when the angels would come down to the waters of the pool and when the waters of the pool start to stir, the first person inside the pool will be miraculously healed. And he believed that if he could just get into this water, when the waters are stirred, he will be healed. Jesus came unto him and he said, do you want to be healed? Do you, oh my shit, to the old shit. Do you want to be healed? But Jesus, then the man had turned around and said, well, it's nobody to put me up in the water. Every time the water stirs, nobody, everybody steps down in front of me. The man, Jesus just asked you, do you want to be healed? He, be, because we, we start, oh my shit, to the old shit, to the old shit. We be thinking that it's something that we have to do. We be thinking that it's some type of, it's some type of thing that we have to put mo um, most of the work in. But no, all Jesus asked you, do you want to be healed? And and he is waiting for you to say yes, because guess what? That's all. That's all you got to do. If you, if Jesus say, do you want to be healed? If you go, if you want your healing for real, go to Jesus. And the, all you got to do is say yes. And when you say that, yes, he will give you the power to overcome that sin. He will heal you of that thing. Because guess what? After he healed that man at that pool, he told him, he said, and now go and sin no more unless something worse falls upon you. We have to realize that some of the stuff that goes on in our life. Holy Spirit, help me calm down because you got me on up. He said, you got to realize that we got to realize that most of the stuff, most of the, 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 the setbacks and all, all of the, the negative things that come up in our life, all of the drama that transpires in our life, it usually is a result of the sins that we are, we are perpetuating in our life. They are a result of the negative and wicked and bad things that is called sin. It is a result of us constantly missing the mark. Guess what? Jesus ain't looking for you to be perfect, but Jesus is calling for you to be perfect. Jesus is calling for you to, he said, follow me. He said, leave behind everything you know. Leave behind your stuff. Leave behind your friends. You even gotta leave behind your mama and daddy, but you gotta come after me. And you got, and, and, and God said that he that searches after me with his whole heart and seeketh me diligently, he shall find me. So therefore we have to understand that in order for us to really be healed, oh my God, in order for us to really be healed, we cannot commit to sin. We can't commit to it. Yes, 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 yes. Folks gonna say.
folks is going to say, oh, well, it's impossible. And nothing is impossible because guess what? You Okay, you can say it's impossible, but guess what the Bible also says? That all things are made possible through Christ Jesus. Things might be impossible with man, but every, anything is possible with Christ Jesus. So I, that's the thing. Folks make so many excuses. Folks make so much. Come on, God. Folks make so many excuses for their sin because guess what? They're so comfortable in it. You're comfortable in it. You think that it's something good because it feels good. You think because it brings some type of satisfaction to your flesh. But let me tell you, it might be satisfying your flesh, but it is corroding your soul. You have to understand that life is a, oh my God, you have to understand that life is a spiritual thing. Life is a spiritual experience. We, we can't get caught up in this flesh because this flesh knows its destination. This flesh knows that it's going to the grave. This flesh knows that its days are numbered. So therefore, this flesh gonna want to do what it wants to do. But thank God for a man named Jesus. Huh? Thank God for a man named Jesus huh? who went to the cross and died and rose on the third day by the power of God and sent the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost is the thing that will oh, my shit to the Romanda. The Holy Ghost is the thing that will convict you. The Holy Ghost is that little voice on the inside of you when you're about to do something wrong. The Holy Ghost is the one that said, oh, you don't need to do that. You don't want to do that. Stop. Uh-uh. You know, you know you ain't got no business doing that. But yet our flesh is over here trying to drown it out. You got to be careful with that because the more that you drown it, the more you quench the spirit. Oh, oh shit. To the old shop. The more that you quench the spirit, the more that you get God out of your mind. And so, because you know, people, in, it says somewhere in Romans, I'll put the verse right here. It says in Romans that because they did not retain God in their knowledge, he gave them over to their lustful hearts. He gave them over to their wicked imaginations. He gave them over to themselves. So, and therefore, they have a reprobate mind. One thing you do not want God to, oh my God, one thing you don't want God to do for you is to give you over to yourself. Ha, is to give you over to yourself and give you over to the things that your heart is full of. I can't remember the verse, but it says it right here about what the heart is full of. It's full of wicked imaginations and evil devices. But you have to understand that when you are, when you are following after Christ, he is calling for, he said, when he said, follow me, first he will say, do you want to be healed? My God, do you want to be healed? Do you want deliverance? Do you want liberty? Do you want to be set free? Because you know, even when I share my testimony about how God has set me from my shit to the Ramanda, how I share my testimony about how God has set me free from a certain lifestyle. You know, when I talk about my freedom, the folks that still in that lifestyle, still in that bondage, they get, they raise up against me. They start to attack me. But guess what? Let me tell you something. They're only attacking me because they are offended. And they are offended. Why? Because guess what? If you believe that God is okay, if you believe that God is okay with it, why are you offended? Why are you raising up against me? But guess what? You are not raising up against me. You are raising up against the power of God because God did this. You can't, you don't take it up with me. Take it up with my father in heaven because he did it for me. Because guess what? When I talk about my freedom, let me calm down. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. When I talk about my freedom, they, they get offended because if I'm saying that I'm free, is obviously reminding them that they need to be free too. And now, instead of, you know, praising, oh God, to God be the glory, this, that, the third, they want to, they want to take, they, the sin in them, because it's not them, it's the sin. The sin in them wants to, wants to, wants to, you know, try to discredit me. But you're not trying to discredit me, you're trying to discredit God, because I had nothing to do with this. All I did was say, he, oh, show the rokasha. All I said was yes, when he he said, do you want to be here? Do oh my God. He said, do you want to be healed? All I said was yes. I showed to the okay. All I said was yes. And with that yes, I had to take a step. And guess what? God is already carrying you. So if you out there, you want to be healed. If you out there, you bound in something. If you out there feeling you just can't shake it, all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. And he's waiting for you to say yes. Oh my God. He wants you to just say yes. Because that's all it takes. It just takes you to say yes in that first step in the right direction. And guess what? God will push you the entire rest of the way. Don't be afraid. Don't be in fret because the devil wants you to be bound. When you sin and you are committed to that sin, when you are in partnership with that sin, you are bound. It is a stronghold in your life. But guess what? The weapons of our warfare 
are not carnal, but mighty in God through the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Oh my God, and bringing every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Christ. You have to understand my people. You might be thinking that this not sinning is impossible, but that's a lie straight from the bed chambers of the devil himself. I'm here to tell you today, guess what? Yes, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We all fall short of the glory of God. But guess what? That's why it's so good to have Jesus. Because remember how I said that the wages of sin is death. In the Old Testament, when you broke any of the laws of Moses, you got stoned. That's why I said you, you they, they shall be put to death. After it listed every sin in, in, in Leviticus, it says they shall be surely put to death. But thank God for Jesus. Hey, because Jesus is grace. Oh my God. God is giving his mercy and his grace to, to us through his son, Jesus. Jesus came with the covenant of grace. But guess what? That grace does not give you leeway to sin because you got a lot of people, and this is a whole nother video topic. You got a lot of people out there that say, well, um, God, forgive me for it anyway. You better stop because that's a lie straight from the bed chambers of the devil himself as well because you are not guaranteed tomorrow. You are not guaranteed the next 30 seconds. So you have to know my soul. You have to choose ye this day who you shall serve. Get up out of that mess. Don't be like a swine that's, that, that, fought, that, that, that just rolls around in this mess. Guess what? Yes, you make mistakes, but guess what? You're supposed to get back up and dust yourself off and get right back into the race. Oh, we may fall, but we get up. Oh my God, because a saint is just a sinner who fell down but got up in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my shetromandasha in no shokuroka in na 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. I feel the power of God. So y'all, listen to me. I'm going to calm down. I'm going to calm down because I'm going to let y'all go. You have to understand that we cannot commit. We cannot practice. We cannot go into partnership. We cannot take league with sin. Because sin is what separates us from the Father. And the more you sin, the harder your heart will become. Oh, my goodness. The more you sin, it's like calluses on your hands. Every time you sin, it's like another callus on your hand. And, and, and eventually it's going to be so callous, you ain't going to have no feeling. And at that moment is when you have been delivered over to a reprobate mind. You don't want to be in a reprobate mind because, guys, you have to also realize that there is a way that seemeth right to a man. But the y'all, my apologies, because here I am. I'm over here editing my video. And then like the last 10 minutes of the video, it's no volume. So guess what? I know I'm talking real good. I know that this message has some power coming behind it because this is a message that is not only to, you know, help people examine themselves, but to help people, you know, get get in alignment with the word and stop fooling yourself. Because, you know, the Bible also has a couple of verses that says, do not be deceived. Do not deceive yourselves. Do not fool yourself. So let's stop fooling ourselves and stop committing to this sin. And let's commit to God and let's submit to his authority because he is the creator of all things and he knows what's best for us. So let's get out of our, let's get out of our own way and let's get out of his way, beautiful people. Now, I'm going I'm, I'm to cut this short now because the devil, he already done cut out, he done cut out 10 minutes of my video. But guess what? It's all right because I believe that the message, the, the message has been delivered and I hope you guys receive it. So guys, always remember, let God get the glory in your story. Be blessed.